So I wake up this morning and uh, the first thing I see is something that is it's important to me. Uh, so there's 358 cases of, of COVID-19 linked to a Cargill meat plant now in South Calgary. Yeah, I said the word, it might get demonetized. I'm not going to talk about the illness. I'm not going to talk about pandemics and stuff. I'm going to just talk about the fact that I spent 15 years working jobs like this. And I feel like I, I can't move on with all my hockey videos today and do all the hockey stuff and relax when I know this is going on. Now, I know there are people out there that don't think this is real and want to spread all these other ideas of what they think it is. But that's 358 people that are ill and in a plant, which is extremely similar to where I used to work. They have tents set up outside now to screen for for its workers. Uh, and, and apparently it's not being run by the military. I don't know. I don't know whether, I mean, it's not, CFIA wouldn't be running that. And I feel bad for CFIA. Sometimes I really do. Uh... They're one of two primary beef suppliers for McDonald's Canada. So this is going to hit. This is going to hit a, a lot of a lot of people. Now, I don't know if, if if McDonald's has had less demand or more demand while everything's shut down. I would think it's probably pretty steady. It's probably dropped from where it was, but that's not important for this today. Uh, now, the plant is also arguing at the union about what's going on. The union saying they've laid off a 1,000 people. The plant saying we didn't lay anybody off. Now, I'll discuss this from the point of view of somebody who spent 15 years working in this. I spent seven years working in poultry, eight years working in a plant that had uh, that processed beef and pork and all of that. And at one point in time, they said, well, we want to process poultry too. And I told them, there's, there's no way. Poultry is, is, you can't have poultry anywhere near beef. One thing you have to keep in mind is this, when you're when you're, when you're dealing with a processing plant like this, your number one concern is cross-contamination. So you want to make sure that if a line is going to process more than one kind of meat, whether it's beef to pork, pork to beef, whether it's, uh, whether you got lamb coming through, whether you've got, you know, whether it's sausage and it's, it's ground beef, and if they're going through the same, you have to make sure that there's no cross-contamination. That is something that they, they test for, and that is something that, Plant workers are very, very conscious of, and and management's very conscious of as well, for two reasons. One, they want to make sure people out, out there aren't getting sick. And two, it's their job. There are some very, very good workers right now who are getting sick, whether it's in the States, whether it's in Canada, and likely globally as well. So I'm, I'm doing this because I feel like it's, it's kind of one of those things that I, I have to talk about because of my experience in this field and what I've seen. Now, the, the first thing about working in a plant like this is you're in close proximity with people all the time, and you're not six feet away. And this is where, this is important too. They're always washing their hands. They're always making sure that they're clean. This is a job where you have to wash your hands all the time. Again, you might be, let's say you're, you're working on a line just traying up pork chops, just putting pork chops in trays, throw them up on the line, they go down, they get wrapped, they end up in a bag, they get sent out to shipping, and they go off to the store. You might have your boss come over and tap you in the shoulder and go, yeah, uh, we need you over on steak. So you know you're going from pork to steak, so now you have to change out your gloves, you need to wash your hands, and you need to go over to the other line, and you may need to change your apron, you may need, you know, there's other things you may need to do before you switch lines. So... It is a very, as much as it can be, it is a very clean environment, but you're close to a lot of people. And this is a job where if I had a dime for every time somebody said, did you notice so-and-so has really bad breath today? Like, there are people, <laughs> if you work with people in these plants and they have bad breath, you're going to know pretty darn quick. And you're going to have people saying, oh, I, you're new, right? You don't want to stand next to that person. Why? Oh, her breath. Oh, man, you do not want to stand next to that person. So they're close enough that you know these things. And you can tell who hasn't showered in a couple weeks. We're like, oh, wow, that person. So again, there's no way you can be that far apart and be efficient. And I'll get into that part of it too. Movement. So what I'm talking about with movement is, and this is for people who try to skip to the ends of, 
of, of videos and just go, oh, I tell on the board where he's going with this. This video you probably won't be able to unless you worked in plant like this. Movement, what I'm talking about is every two hours you have to switch which task you do. Now, at, at uh, the, the poultry plant, uh, that I was working there when, when rules started to change, when they made it so you had to wear a hard hat, which was bizarre because when we first had to wear hard hats, I'm like, why? And they, they mentioned that somebody had a head injury at work. And I'm like, seriously, if that the person was stupid, how do I have to wear a helmet? Cause they're, they, they didn't know to watch and they didn't realize reaching over their head to bring something down that was made of metal. It might fall and hit them in the head. They did something. Done. So, uh, movements a thing because around that same time that they made sure wearing helmets, they told us you can't work the same job more than two hours. And there was a reason for that. Because, yeah, you could work the exact same task for an entire eight-hour shift. You can. Uh, where it's just like, okay, now you are eviscerating, which is taking the, the, the innards out of the birds. And, you know, it, it's not a pleasant job. But honestly, once you get the hang of it, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. You don't think about it. You really don't. At least I didn't. I just stand around and talk about hockey all day. And now, <laughs> here I am. So, movement is two things it is it is the fact that the line is constantly in motion so if you're doing your job here and let's say you're you're training something up and you you realize that you're almost done so okay we'll go back to the pork chop metaphor pork chop point point example of pork chops so you're finishing up what you're doing and you're changing the cut you're going from your regular size pork chops to your thin cut pork chops and you've just sent some trays down the line and you realize, oh crap, we got some some extra pieces here and it's not enough to make extra trays. So you go and bring trays back so you can retray them up with an extra pork chop each so that you, you meet the exact specifications of the order for that day. Because that's the thing. You have to make sure there's a certain amount of trays. You have to make sure that you're, you're meeting that order. So you may go down the line and bring trays back, meaning you're going down to somebody at the end of the line you're not working next to. And again, you're not six feet apart. There's no way that you're throwing trays six feet to somebody. That just that would have been hilarious. Six feet, six feet. I'll wing them at you. Uh, and and so you're also switching jobs. So I might be working with with Bill. I'm all right. I'm working with Bill for two hours, and we're right next to each other, and we're talking. And then the next two hours, I might be at the other end of the line working with 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 Dave for for you know two hours. And it might be four or five people I'm in really close proximity with that I wasn't near in this previous shift. So if I come in and I don't know that I'm coming down with something, and this would happen a lot, where I have a cold, and this was obviously the common one, where I have a cold, I don't know it yet, I'm, I'm at this end of the line, then I'm at that end of the line, then I'm over there, then I'm over, and, and I'm with different people. The next day I wake up and I, I've got a sore throat, and a cough, and I would I would come into work because that's what you do, and I'll get into that part too. And I would tell people I, I'm I'm sick, and right away the reaction would be really I worked next to you yesterday, yeah, sorry about that. And sure enough, by about you know a week or two down the road, everybody would end up having a cold because you know one person would come in and and we were all in close proximity. Now labor demographics make a difference. Now I'm talking about two things here. One. Uh, in both cases, I worked with people who were older. So we've discussed with, with if you're going to get sick, people that are older, that's a problem. Uh, and, and there were also a lot of foreign workers. So if you're coming over to Canada, you're coming over to the U.S., you're looking for a job that you can get hired, it's probably going to be a job people don't want. These plants, people don't really think this is my career forever. That's not really how they look at it. I mean, you can make a half decent living working in these places, but it's you're you're not going to get rich. You're not you're not going to be uh, all that comfortable either because you might get uh, 50 hours one week and 30 the next. You you don't have there's not a whole lot of certainty. Uh, might have been preparing me for for YouTube where your your income from one month to the next is just whatever. Uh, you make twice as much that month as you do the next month, and then it goes back up, and then it goes down. And I guess I was preparing for this when I was doing 15 years of that. But labor demographics were, are important, because here's the thing. The people least likely to call in sick are foreign workers. Uh, I remember we got a, a, a whole swath of, of foreign workers that came over uh, at the last job I had, and they were great. They never called in. 
They were always there. They did all the overtime. Uh, they were really hard workers to the point where I thought it was to their own detriment. I would, you know, I, I, I worked in the first aid department and I would see guys come in and their shoulders were sore, their wrists were sore. And it was from all the overtime and from doing all the really hard jobs. And I was like, you got to take it easy. And they were nervous about taking it easy because they were nervous that they were there on a work permit. And they wanted to make sure that they weren't going to end up in any kind of jeopardy with their job. And they wanted to impress because they wanted to stay in Canada and they wanted to be able, some of them were just over by themselves and their families were still back home. So they didn't want to put any of that in, in jeopardy. And, and until they had some kind of permanent residency in Canada and they could find a different job, they wanted to make sure that they impressed their current employer. So this is important because you're going to see a lot of foreign workers and you're going to see a lot of older workers as well because again these plants you don't get you get a lot of people applying for jobs but the ones that they hire I've always had suspicions on I can't prove it but it always kind of felt like they would hire the people that they felt they would have the least trouble with and and I understand that but sometimes it meant that they would hire people that I would say okay this this is going to be a challenge today because I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to get that person up to speed quickly enough with what we've got going on because over time the number one thing people need to understand about why these plants you're going to get um some some dissatisfaction in the workforce so there were days where i i would work from from 5 five fifty until two thirty was my standard shift and it might be quarter after two so you're looking at the clock and you're ready to go home and your boss walks up to you we need you to work four hours overtime I can't, I can't work four hours overtime. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, we, we need you to work four hours overtime because, and then there'd be some reason for that. And I'll get into the reasons because there are reasons. This, this is not just the heartless corporation versus the worker in these ones at all. So the, the overtime would basically be, be thrown at you as you're getting ready to go home. And if you said, but I've got a kid and there's, there's daycare and not my problem. My kid's getting out of school. I'm supposed to go pick him up. It's not our problem. You're going to have to figure something out. Okay, how do, how do I do that? Because I can't be home. So rather than being home at 3 o'clock, I'm going to be home at 7. And then what ends up happening is, and, and this I, I know was was really frustrating, was that it, it makes it so that you, you get up, you go to work, and you sleep. You get up, you go to work, and you... So there, there isn't any time for anything else in between. And they can ha it can go on for weeks. You can have... Uh, sometimes they would put up sheets and say, all right, so there's overtime and uh, you should probably sign that. Why? Because you're going to get forced. But I don't want to do that. That's that's two weeks. And it might be seven days a week. And it so again, you can make really good money on that because that's 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 time and a half. It's double time. And depending on on which plant you're working in, you might be able to bank that time. So. You might be able to take it when it's really, really busy, bank all your overtime and have it so that you have a paid two weeks off because of all the overtime you've been working. And that can be very, very lucrative to people. And there are people who really love the overtime. That as soon as an overtime sheet would go up, I'd go, okay, that one's going to sign up, that one's... And I would t I would count it because they'd always put how many how many labor and how many cutters they needed and all that. And I'd go, all right. And I'd, and I'd try to figure it out. I'd count from the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to need X amount of people to sign up above me and it can get stressful. You can get really stressful. And for, for workers, you never know. And and on the other side of it, uh, I had time when I was I was starting there and things were slow where my supervisor would come up to me and go, Yeah, you have to go home. And I was like, I I can't I can't afford my bills on what you guys are paying me right now. Are you I gotta go home? Yep. And as soon as I had a supervisor basically look at me and go, Yeah, yeah, you, you have to go home. <laughs> I was like, but I don't have money for my bills or food, and I have two small kids at home. And the just just the glassed, glassed over look from a supervisor was like, yeah, I really don't care. No, don't, don't give me your sob story. Just get out. I That was when I went, and I'll remember that the next time you tell me how important I am to you for overtime. So I, I and I did. I never again <laughs> took, took their pleas for overtime as anything more than, yeah, that's too bad. That's too bad for you. It's not really my problem. In fact, it got to the point where supervisors would come around to ask for overtime and I would see them with the sheet and they'd be coming around and I would just look them off. They could be 20 feet away and I'd go, no, 
No. You, you don't know. No. And if there was somebody else next to me, I go, don't ask them either. They're saying no. So I, I was very, very, very vocal about that. Because, yeah, it, it, and it, it can be a, 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 a tough relationship. But there's another side to this. So when you're hearing about this, and there's, there's, there's another side to this, they have contracts. So for whether it's Cargill, whether it's JDS, or whoever you're hearing about in the news that's going through this, they have a contract to fill. And if they don't, there are penalties, and they can lose that contract. And this is something that supervisors would bring up with staff when they were looking for overtime. And, and I have to say, they are not wrong. They're not wrong to worry about that. Because if, if you run a plant like this, there's another plant somewhere that's going, oh, that's a shame about you guys closing down. We'll take that contract. I know we had, uh, and again, I'm talking about the the meat, the beef plant that I was in, beef and, and pork. And there were times where we would have uh, overtime that we had had a hard time filling the orders for the stores. And then there was another plant in Surrey that would actually process some of it. And then it would get sent to our plant, and then we would send it to the stores. And I used to joke, you know, at some point, the guys we're selling the meat to, they're going to figure it would be easier just to go straight to them instead of going through them to get to us, and then we send it out. This be, and be like, don't, shh. Like, because that's that'll be our jobs then going to that other plant. And that's... That's that's how cutthroat things can be. Where even if even if somebody else is helping you out, on the back of your mind, you're saying these people could take our jobs. If if they're packing it better, if if it's done faster, if they're better at it, and again, if you're management, you have to get the job done fast. You which means the line has to go as fast as possible. I know we would have inspections where they'd come through and, and look at the plant and make sure everything's being done safely and properly. And you could tell when those inspections were coming through because they'd slow everything down. And I'd be standing on the line looking at the ceiling going, oh man, this is why is this taking so long? Why do I have time in between all these trays coming down the line? i got to throw in bags. Why do I have time? And they're like, oh, there's an inspection coming through today. When? Oh, they don't know. Oh, this could go on all day. And so... You might slow the line down, and then all of a sudden the entire plant has two hours of overtime because they slowed everything down. And then you're frustrated. You're like, wait, so I... They put it at a human level, and I'm used to the superhuman, I hope I'm getting everything in the right bag, because you might have four or five different products coming down at the same time, and if you're bagging it all up, you got to make sure you're throwing the right tray in the right bag... And they're all the same size. And it can be really easy if, you, if you've if you got... Because you'll have somebody working next to you. It can be really easy to get talking. And then, whoops, I threw the wrong thing in that bag. And then you got to go bring it back. And then while you're going to bring it back, it, the, the line piles up with meat. Contracts are the big one. And so for Cargill, I totally understand why they haven't closed. When I heard that they went to a single shift and sl slowed the line down, I thought they're not hitting their contract goals. They're not. And that's that's going to be worrying because now for McDonald's or whoever else they're, they're, they're selling their beef to, they're going to be looking for somebody else who can fill that need. And then there's the expiring product. So for people who might wonder, well, how can they get away with just throwing, you know, 20 hours of overtime at people every week? Because the product expires. We had, uh, there was the... Uh, I don't want to say mad cow, but there was that there was that beef problem in Alberta that we had that meant that all the T-bone steaks uh, couldn't go out, and so we had a whole we had a lot of product sitting in the back that we couldn't we couldn't process, and it ate into our hours. It meant we were getting sent home early because we weren't doing certain steaks. Now, at the end of all of that, uh, they decided that the steaks that we had. Uh, were not affected by uh, this this uh, this recall, so there was a there was actual recall that took place. So these boxes have been sitting back there for a long time, and then our bosses went, "Well, we don't want the product to go bad." So even though the product and it was kind of like on you know you know when the milk when you kind of smell it and you go, "I think that's okay," and you drink it and you go, eh, "If I had that an hour from now, it may not have been any good." Uh, and, and that's kind of where we were at with those steaks. Well, we ended up having to stay stay for overtime and process as much of that product as possible. So if Cargill comes out tomorrow and they say, all right, so we're going to lay everybody off for the next two weeks, all that product's going to be sitting there. And that means that for the workers, when they come back, there's going to be a boatload of overtime. 
to, to try to probably get as close as they can to making that contract. And because there's going to be a lot of meat in that plant that's going to expire. When you see at Wendy's, you know, that it's never frozen beef, they have to do that. And not only that, but if you see product in a store and it says fresh, it can never have been frozen. It has to have been refrigerated right from the plants I'm talking about here, right until you get it in the store. So if something gets frozen, you have to label it as, as, as keep frozen and previously frozen. And it drops the value of the meat. It drops the value of the product. Once you freeze and thaw meat, it changes the flavor. It changes its quality. And while I've never really noticed a huge difference, it is a major deal if, say, the refrigeration is too too cold and all of a sudden it's freezing everything. That's a major deal. You call in the refrigeration people because that's not supposed to happen. So as soon as you start seeing ice places, you better make a call or else you're, you're threatening uh, that the product won't be suitable to be sold as fresh. Uh, it's a lot of pressure that management's under. And I think as we go through this, we're going to see a lot of people throwing a lot of hate towards Cargill and other companies. And hey, I, I understand the, the, the hatred towards the, the employer side of things as well. But it, it is a complicated issue. This is a, this is a food product that there's a large demand for. And, you know, whenever you see a sale in the stores, and this is, this is how I view it now. When I look at a sale, and it's on steak, or it's on ground beef, or it's pork chops, or even chicken, whatever it is, and I see a really good deal, I'm thinking, that's a really good price. Somebody somewhere worked 16 hours today because the demand for this product just went through the roof. And that's that's how I look at it. So like I said, uh, you know, as soon as I got up this morning and saw this in the news, I wanted to do a video on this because there are a lot of people working in these plants who can't really say very much so I, I don't think they're going to say anything to to the press you don't want to be the guy in the plant that said something to the press because again most of these places have unions and some some form of protection but you also have contracts you sign when you start working in somewhere and keeping your mouth shut is kind of part of it it's kind of sort of part of it so you know if if somebody goes to the press and talks about how things are in the plant yeah you could probably you know say they're they're done that the company's gonna gonna have non-disclosure contracts to throw at them or whatever they are. Or there's contracts you sign. You just you know those those long diatribes. You're like, oh, how many pages is this? All right, just give me a pen. All right, I'm signing that. Oh, there's another one. All right, and, you know, just give me a pen. And so they're they cover themselves. They have to. They have to. Uh, it is it is a uh, it is it is a rough industry. Now. I, I do agree as well that, that there are some, some plants that, that do things that are really not, not good for the rest of the, 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 uh, the, the industry where they, they cut a lot of corners and they, they have a lot of uh, cruelty issues. I haven't seen that. I really haven't for the most part. Uh, on the poultry side every now and then, yes. But the poultry side, because you have to go from kill to the truck in, I think it was six hours it had to be refrigerated right from the kill because with poultry you're dealing with you're dealing with some pretty serious uh biological issues that if if the meat's out for too long chicken you cannot you cannot leave chicken at room temperature you just can't do that it's it's just it, it can there, there's a reason that chef ramsey gets right up to somebody's face and says you're going to kill somebody he's he's not just doing that for effect because there's a camera right there although he's totally doing that for effect because there's a camera right there. He's saying it because you can. So there you go. I, I wanted to do this first today. I understand that this is a video that likely doesn't get a whole lot of views and might not get any traction. And people might say, well, why do we really care? But I, I do care. And so for people who are still in this, uh, you know, it's tough because you, you have to go to work. Uh, the idea that you can just call your employer and say, well, I'm not coming in today. I'm sick. Uh, and, and I used to go through this, and I want to close on this too, because this is something I, I used to fight for and, and fight. And this this is this happens in most jobs. But in a plant where it's close proximity, you're moving from people to from person to person all the time. When you come in and you're like, I need to go home because I'm sick, and the first thing your supervisor says is, ah, Can you stick around though? Like, are you okay to work? Like, we can put you in an easier job so that you know, and if you go, well, I just threw up. Yeah, 
But do you still feel sick, though? Because if you could stay, that would be great. Or or you would also hear, well, we're not letting anybody go today. Well, I'm not saying that I want to go home early because I want to go home and play Nintendo. I'm saying I want to go home because I feel like my stomach's going to jump right out of my throat and onto the floor. And I don't think you want to process that. The pressure on, on the, the supervisors to have exactly cost certainty... They would, they would make sure they had the exact right number of people on their line because there'd be cost analysis. And if you as a supervisor weren't providing the right t- type of cost benefits, uh, you, your job could be on the line. And then when it comes to bonuses, when it comes to your annual reviews and raises, they could go, well, we'd love to give you a raise, but you know. Uh, and then with supervisors, in my experience, they were salaried. So when we were working all this overtime, they were not getting any extra money and yet they were working all the overtime too and I would point that out to people who get really mad and say my supervisor is such a jerk because blah 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 and I'd say you realize right now we're making more than they are because we're getting double time for this and they're not getting paid they get they get their salary and that's it that salary the pressure on that salary is huge and so in these plants it's absolutely huge and that's why if you're sick and you want to go home they're they're leaning towards do you though uh, there was one instance where here I am living in Abbotsford, my job's in Chilliwack, and the road was closed between here and Chilliwack. So I'm, I'm calling my supervisor and saying, I, I can't get to work. And his answer was, can you though? Can you try? And I'm like, the roads are closed because because of snow, and and there wasn't enough snow removal, and the, the road between Chilliwack and Abbotsford can be treacherous at the best of times. There was one instance where we tried. We even put tra- chains on the van, and it just, there, there was no way. We, we were still having trouble and we couldn't see it was blizzard conditions so you know we turned around and went came back home uh and and so they will still have that pressure of we know we need this amount of people to work today and we've already had six people call in we're on the verge of having to force everybody to work overtime and so when that person comes up to you and goes i'm feeling really sick can i go home their leaning is towards no so I guarantee that in, in the plants we're talking about, there have been people who said, I need to go home because I'm sick. And because of the pressure on management to make sure they're filling these contracts and that they're doing this in a timely manner and that they're keeping the overtime down because if overtime is too much. So you, you have this contract to make a certain amount of money from McDonald's, from wherever. And if, if your costs are too high, McDonald's goes, it's not really our problem, is it? I guess you guys should speed up. We're not paying those shortfalls for you. Sorry. So that could be a problem right there too, where you know they, they have all this overtime. McDonald's going, we're already losing money on this too. You guys need to supply us with our product. And again, I'm saying this to somebody who doesn't know, just from what I've seen uh, in my time working with this. It, it is going to cause problems around a lot of different industries. It is, and this is going to be food prep. This is going to be food work. This is going to happen. Um, I'm not worried as much with restaurants. You can you can distance when you're working in a restaurant, and I'm not worried about the the product on the food and all that, or the 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 issue of it transferring through the food. But in the plants where they're they're producing it, and I I would think this could very well happen in other food prep industries as well. But right now, it looks like it's mostly meat plants, and I understand why those would be the first ones to get hit because of the things I outlined before. So if you're in this situation. You know, I, I, I wish all of you my best. I And again, I know how hollow that sounds right now because I'm not there. Uh, after 15 years, you know, I was I felt very fortunate that I was able to, to, to transition to, to being a YouTuber and into another industry altogether where I was working, you know, uh, as, as a greeter at, at a local um, at a local uh, expo center for lack of a better term it's kind of what it's kind of like an expo center basically an air, airport hangar that they have all these shows in christmas show women's show and all that other stuff and i was just greeting at the door most days and i was very grateful to get out because then i didn't have to worry about all of a sudden hey we need you to work four extra hours today yeah <laughs> every now and then i get asked i would be like hey so-and-so called in sick can you stick around i'd be like nah i can't sorry and, and I never got forced either because there would always be somebody else who was willing to come in and, and do the hours because it was relatively easy. I was just, I had, I knew I had other work to do. 
And so I would just say no. And I knew there wasn't going to be a moment of, you have to, this is forced now. Um, and, and again, hopefully this gets cleared up. Hopefully they figure something out. Uh, I remember thinking it was weird when I worked at the plant and somebody would come in that had had a flu or had a cold and they'd wear a mask on the floor. And we had the, the medical masks in the office. And I'd be like, I guess they want a mask. It's kind of weird. And now those people were pioneers. They were pioneers. And something that we would all kind of go, that's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know if that's going to work. And they were pioneers. So hopefully this gets figured out. And... Uh, We'll see what happens to, to prices at, at local stores when it comes to buying meat. Because, again, it's supply and demand, right? So demand's going to go up and supply's going to go down. And uh, that's why we made sure we had as much beef in the house as we could get into our two fridges when we heard about the plant in the States. As soon as we heard about the plant in the U.S., I said, okay, we this is going to happen elsewhere. So stay safe out there. Stay home as much as you can. If you're working in these plants, you can't. There are plenty of other people who can't. Uh, it is a luxury to be able to stay home. I know this. And for those who can do. And yeah, just stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we will get through this. And and to people in Cargill in, in Alberta, my thoughts are with you because it's something that I've I've been through. Not with this, obviously, but I've been through where I've got the flu and I've gone, I know I got this at work. I got a cold. I know I got this at work. And I would have multiple colds during the winter because I knew I was going to keep getting them. And I knew I was going to have to work with them. I knew I was going to have to work while I wasn't feeling well. I knew that if I had the flu, I had like two days I could take off. And then I had to go back to work, kind of no matter how I was feeling at the time. And that's that's that can be frustrating when you're like, I should stay down for another day, but I have to go back to work because I can't afford the time off. And if I take too many days off, I could end up in an office being asked why it took me so long to get over the flu. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. It means a ton. And now that I've got this out of the way, now I feel like I can talk about some hockey. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.